Certain species of reptiles are not for beginners, but I bet you think they are. And today, we're going over the top five advanced reptiles that you think anybody can take care of and five close substitutes that anybody really can. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. To be clear, I don't really think there's beginner reptiles and then advanced reptiles and like we'd label them to make things easy, but I don't think you should go out and get a corn snake because it's a beginner reptile when really what you want is a berm. I think you should do your research, get some experience, don't get animals that you don't actually want because you think it's a rite of passage and you have to. I just wanted to put that out there. I'm not saying you need a hundred animals to go ahead and get your eventual dream reptile. But there are certain reptiles that aren't as forgiving and aren't as easy as others, and those are the ones we're gonna talk about today. And it'll give you some substitutes that are actually much, much easier that you probably didn't think about. So let's just start with number five, BCIs, BCCs. I'm talking about boa constrictors. Now, these are Central and South American boas that are going to get eight, 10, 12 feet long. We're talking about the big boys. We're talking about Franny. Now, Franny is a BCI, I'm pretty sure. Franny's actually a male, although it came to me as a, a female. And he's about seven feet long. Now, this animal I got in 2017, I think born in 2016. Let's call him six or seven years old, okay? So he's gonna continue to grow a little bit as he ages, but he's basically around the same size that he's going to be for the rest of his life, which could be 25 plus years. Boas can live really great lives, especially if they're cared for properly. And because I've had him since he was a year old and I've taken really good care of him, I feel confident he's gonna live a long time. The reason they're not for beginners is A, they are really, really big. So a seven foot animal that's arboreal needs an enclosure that at minimum is three feet high in my opinion. I have mine in a three foot high times eight foot long times four foot wide enclosure. So for context, some people I know keep their full grown boas in 75 gallon enclosures. That's disgusting. My enclosure is 720 gallons. Why we use gallons, I don't know, but just for context, that's what it is. And so a four by two by two is 120 gallons. My enclosure is six times bigger than that almost. Math is hard, it's close. And I think this is the proper way to do it because uh, he's got room to climb. Now, before we go on too far here, what you can keep instead is a hog island boa because hog island boas are gonna be three and a half to five feet. So a five foot snake is basically like a ball python. So you can keep this animal in a four by two by two. If you wanna give it more height, because it is going to be a semi-arboreal animal, I fully support that, I think it's a great idea. However, because they are smaller, two feet is gonna go a longer way than it would if it was a seven foot animal, right? And because I know two feet doesn't seem big, two feet is big because also the body, right? My boa is 40 pounds almost, almost a 40 pound animal. Whereas a hog island boa, my hog island boa, is less than two pounds. And full grown animals are gonna be less than five. So they're gonna be quite a bit smaller in terms of not only their length, but their girth. It's just more doable. Also the bite, uh, if it happens, it's very rare because boas generally are pretty placid, is gonna be less of an event if it's a hog island boa in comparison to a BCI. Number four, green iguanas. Now I hope by now we know that green iguanas are not starter reptiles. If you are about my age, I'm in my early 30s, when I was a kid, the 90s, early 2000s, the green iguanas were everywhere. That's what everybody had. They kept them in way too small enclosures, didn't give them UVB. Oh, mine just free roams the house. Oh yeah, it does it without its UVB, no hotspot, proper thermoregulation. Either way, they are big. We're talking five foot sometimes. Sometimes they can be pretty angry. If they tail whip you, if they bite you, it's an event. It's a problem. They're not the easiest to take care of. They need huge spaces. I don't think this is a good beginner animal. Do your research. I mean, maybe you could be a beginner animal for you, but you're gonna need a custom enclosure. You can't put it in something you buy off a shelf at PetSmart. Instead, if you are really concentrated on an advanced animal for your first animal, I would say get a monkey tail skink instead because you can keep it in something like what's back there, a four foot high times four foot wide times two foot deep enclosure. And that's perfectly fine for one or maybe even two, although I recommend getting something a little bit taller, maybe six by four by two. Either way, 
I also don't think the monkey tail skinks are a great beginner species, but I'm just saying if you really want something new and unique, they're also herbivores, which is why I had to put them there. I couldn't think of anything that's a beginner species, in my opinion, that's an herbivore, but here we go. If you want something that is arboreal and green and beautiful, but much smaller, much more manageable, much easier to feed, and isn't going to bite the crap out of you, get yourself an emerald tree skink. Now, if you watch Clint's Reptiles, you already know, I'm pretty sure he has one tattooed inside of his brain. Like, this is this guy's thing, okay? Emerald tree skinks are amazing. There's a good reason why he loves them so much. And the reason that they're so cool is because they're smaller, much smaller than a green iguana. They're going to be arboreal, and they're going to be tameable too. You can keep some of these in a 36 by 18 by 18, which you can buy off of a shelf at your local reptile shop which is why I recommend you buy things, by the way. I think that these are really cool animals, but they're insectivores. So they're not going to be eating vegetables like a green iguana would, but also everything else is better. Their temperament is better, handling is easier. They're not big. They don't need a big enclosure. Their temperature and humidity is pretty easy. All the way around, emerald tree skinks are better in my opinion. Let's move on. Just before we move on to the next one, I wanna say thanks to our sponsor today, The Ridge Wallet. Now, my Ridge Wallet and my key case is all I need to leave the house, all my keys, all my money, all my cards, and it takes up less than half of my pocket. My old wallet was kind of floppy and gross. I got rid of that. This thing comes in more than 30 colors, holds up to 12 of my cards, holds all my colorful money, keys flip out, don't poke me in the side anymore, and this thing has 50,000 five-star reviews. That many people can't be wrong. And you can get the best offer if you go to ridge.com slash WWR. And right now you can get up to 40% off all the way until December 22nd, ridge.com slash WWR. Number three, aquatic turtles. Not all of them, big and medium size. So I'm talking about things like red ear sliders, yellow belly sliders, the really common ones that if you were a kid in the 80s or 90s, you probably had. If you had a pet reptile, it was probably a red ear slider, you probably kept it in an enclosure that was way too small, you didn't have UVB, you didn't have proper filtration, and you probably let it go in a lake because you're a silly goose. Here's why I think these are bad pets for most people. If you keep a full-size red ear slider or two, you need 150 gallons minimum, in my opinion, that's a big, big tank. We're talking about six feet long, probably. It takes up most of your living room. That's what I have. I have a yellow belly slider, and I have a Mississippi map turtle. Inside of this enclosure, it's 150 gallons. It has the biggest filter that you can buy off of a shelf. It has UVB, it has a basking spot, the entire thing. These turtles were free, by the way. I got these turtles for free, and we have spent thousands of dollars on them. I love them, it's worth it for me, but if you want something that is better, in my opinion, get yourself musk turtles, or mud turtles, or stink pots, whatever you wanna call them. We're talking about three and a half inch turtles, rather than eight inch turtles, because you can keep these in a 75 gallon enclosure. It's just much easier. They're beautiful, they're small, they're very quick, they're very tiny. You can keep them with fish because they're not gonna try to eat bigger fish because they are so small. You feed them just like a regular turtle. They need a basking spot just like a regular turtle, but everything is shrunken down and just like a regular turtle, I wouldn't recommend handling them, but these guys are tolerant to it when needed. Just overall, I think they're a much better option and they're super cute. And although they're a little bit more expensive to buy, the setup is gonna cost you way less. So you're gonna save money in the long run and you can keep multiple of them together. Number two, axolotls. <laughs> okay, so axolotls are not even reptiles. They're amphibians, they're a salamander, they're fully aquatic. They're from basically one place in Mexico. They're gonna be extinct by the time you and I die of old age, okay? But the reason that they're not for beginners, in my opinion, is because they produce a lot of waste, so they need an advanced filtration system. But more than that, they like it really cold. We're talking about mid-60s. If you get into the 70s, there's a good chance these animals are not going to make it. They want it really cold. And for most people, we keep our homes in the 70s, and especially if you live in a place where there's a summer, let's suppose you live in Southern California, and your apartment gets up to 80 degrees your axolotls are gonna die. So it's much more difficult to keep them cool than to keep something warm because you need a chiller or a fan and that creates quite a bit of evaporation. So in my opinion, although I love them, they're amazing. 
they're really difficult to keep. Mine are on the other side of this wall in a basement that is not heated, that section of the basement anyway. So they're at 64 degrees, but there is nowhere else in my home that I could possibly keep them. That's why they're there. So instead I recommend a Pac-Man frog. Now they're not aquatic, they're actually terrestrial, but they're really cool. They come in a bunch of morphs, just like an axolotl, and they like it really close to room temperature. You need maybe a, say a heat mat or something like that to keep them warm enough, but they're gonna eat the same sort of things. Earthworms, crickets, dubia roaches, things like that. They have a huge mouth, just like an axolotl, so I think it's really fun to watch them eat. You don't need to do water changes or have water filtration because they're a frog that is mostly terrestrial. They're not a fully aquatic animal. And overall, it's just a smaller enclosure than an axolotl would need. And also, you're not gonna need as much height, and you can plant it, it can be beautiful. I just think that Pac-Man frags are awesome. They're also gonna be pretty lazy. Axolotls are known for being very lazy, so are Pac-Man frogs. If you go on vacation and you leave your Pac-Man frog, it might be in the exact same location when you get it back. Oh, make sure you have someone take care of your Pac-Man frog. The only reason that I have one to shoot B-roll of is, is because my friend, remember Brittany from a couple weeks ago, when she bought the Pac-Man frog? I'm babysitting peaches, so. Love having peaches. Pac-Man frogs are actually pretty cool. It's fun to watch them eat. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Number one, arboreal monitors. I never thought of arboreal monitors, talking about green tree monitors, emerald tree monitors, whatever you want to call them, blue tree monitors. I never thought of them as beginner species, but the amount that I see on Reddit, in comment sections, uh, on Dian's videos especially. So Dion Reptiliatus, one of my, my buddies, he's got emerald tree monitors. And a lot of people will comment, well, Dion has one, is that a good beginner species? I saw on Reptiliatus' channel, like, it's not. These are not beginner species. They need big enclosures, they have a kind of diverse diet, they're more difficult to tame down, although Dion did an amazing job with his, and they're really expensive, and they're kind of fragile if you don't know what you're doing. So I don't think they're a great option. And they're kind of big for a beginner species that's arboreal, they need really big enclosures. So instead, what I would recommend if you want something that's monitor-esque, that kind of acts like it, has a really long tail, it's prehensile, keelbelly lizards. Now this is the newest animal in my collection. Meet these keelbelly lizards, which don't have names yet. Leave in the comment section, what should the names be? I love these guys. They're mini monitors. They're very smart, not quite as smart as emerald tree monitors. They're quite a bit cheaper. Now not, they're not cheap. I think for the pair I paid 800 bucks Canadian, so they're definitely not cheap but they are really cool. I keep them in a 36 by 18 by 36. So it's in a 36 wide, tall, 18 deep. And it has a Universal Rocks background. It's planted fully. It's beautiful to look at. They're not big enough that they're gonna trample the plants. If you guys know and you watch the channel, I love plants. I'm a nerd. I have very expensive plants now and I, not in this enclosure, but hit subscribe because I'm building an enclosure that has like thousands of dollars of plants in it because Troy Goldberg, I'm a fanboy, and whatever he does, I want to do too. Anyway, keelbelly lizards are amazing. They're from Africa, so a different part of the world where most tree monitors are from Indonesia in that part of the world. They don't like it super warm. The humidity is a little bit high. The care is pretty similar, and these guys are going to be insectivores. They're fun to feed. They're fun to watch. They're beautiful. I have them up in my office because I like to look at them. They're diurnal. They move around. Keelbelly lizards are the cat's pajamas. So there you go. Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love for you to let me know in the comments section. Please hit subscribe and the like button while you're down there. It really helps the channel, allows us to do more videos like this. And as always, thanks especially to the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch, outtakes, a whole bunch of different stuff for as little as a dollar a month. And that's it. Because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.